What happens when you install 821 rec port heads designed for a big bore application on a small bore 48 or 53? Can you even make them work? Let's find out. Hello everybody, I'm Richard Holdner and welcome to the channel. I'm at West Tech Performance trying to answer all the questions and the question for today is we have big port big valve rec port factory LS3 heads from the guys at Skog and Dickey designed for big bore motors. The question is, can we run these big bore heads on a small bore 48 or 53? Every bit is important. This question, if we can do it, should we? Okay guys, the question seems to be, can we run the big port, big valve, big chamber, factory rec port heads on our small bore 5.3 or 4.8 liter as luck would have it I happen to have a brand new set of factory 821 rec port heads supplied by the guys at Summit Racing so what do you say we'll open these up we'll put them on the small bore 5.3 display motor which will allow us to peek inside and let's find out what happens So before we install our 821 rec port heads, we have a set of 706 heads on our 5.3 liter display motor. And I just wanted to show you this to give you an idea. We have our valves, we have test springs on them. This is a 706 head with these small valves. I want you to take a look and see, we're not concerned with piston to valve clearance because the piston is down in the hole. What we're concerned with is the valve going to hit the edge of the bore. And since this head was designed for this motor, the answer is no. But I wanted to demonstrate because we're going to compare this when we put the rec port head on. So you take a look. Look at that. The valve will go all the way down until the retainer hits the seal. That's basically all of it. It's just going down into the cylinder. Same thing with the intake and the exhaust all the room in the world. So now let's install the rec port heads and see what happens. Off come our 706 heads. Go our 821 heads. Get them all lined up. As you can see, that one corner is missing the dowel, but we're good. Okay, as you can see, we've installed our 821 rec port heads on our aluminum 5.3 liter. And this is the ATK motor that I've sectioned out. I'm gonna go ahead and show you a photo here. We've sectioned out a piece of the head on the 706 head, but more importantly, a section of the block on this aluminum block. So we can look inside and see what's going on with piston to valve clearance. This is also going to allow us to install this rec port head and show you exactly what's happening when we put this big valve head on the small bore motor. But first let's check out and see what happens if we just try to depress the valves like we did on the 706 head. This is our 821 head. Look at this. Look, it already hits. You only have that much room. And how much room is that? Well, according to our mic, if we measure the change from here down to there, we only have about 400 thousandths lift before this valve hits the edge of the cylinder. Let's take a closer look. I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about and all the problems we're gonna run into trying to run this big valve head 
on the small bore motor. Okay guys, what exactly is the problem with putting the big rec port heads on the small bore motor? And you might think, hey, it's these giant size valves. Take a look at the valve, take a look at the intake valve, take a look at the exhaust valve on the rec port head, and compare that to the tiny valves run on the 706 head. Actually, it's slightly larger valves on the 799 and 243 heads, which also run on the small bore 48 and 53s. But that's not the only thing. You might think, hey, look, that's a giant intake valve. That's definitely going to hit. Well, part of the problem with the LS3 style head, that rec port cell head, is that they've moved the valve position relative to the combustion chamber. Unfortunately for us, the, the reorienting of the valves have gone out toward the chamber wall, which means they're going to hit even more, despite the fact that they were probably already going to hit because they're a lot bigger. Now they've moved them out compounding our problem. In fact, so much so that it's the exhaust valve that actually creates more of a problem with piston to cylinder wall or deck surface on the small bore motor than the giant size intake valve. What do you guys think about that? I'm gonna show you exactly where they hit. Let's clay up the deck surface. We'll put the head back on. I'll push down the valves and show you exactly where they're hitting and exactly what our problem is. Okay, guys, as you can see, I gave up on the clay. It didn't really show up as well. Instead, I applied some blue dicum. So let's check out and see where the valves are hitting. If you take a look in there, you can see that's the exhaust valve hitting the edge. It's not hitting it by a little bit either. It's overhanging it quite a bit. Take this off and I can show you where it's hitting. So if we look very closely, you can see right here, that's where the exhaust valve was hitting. See the intake over on this side, right here. Look over here on the intake, we can see right where the intake was hitting. See the shiny spot right there. Let's take a look over at where we've done some porting <laughs> or some clearancing. So I'll see we've done some clearancing for the exhaust valve here. I just took a you know, porting tool basically, a steel porting tool, laid it back and then laid it down. And we're almost down to the ring land there. And you can see how far over we are. I'll put the gasket back on, but we're all the way <laughs> past the gasket surface. The intake's not as bad, at least as far as the gasket surface goes. We might have to still go down a little bit, but again, this is only 600 lift here. So we're not anywhere near what kind of camshaft you need to run because we have to have more than enough clearance. We can't just have it at 600 and run a 600 lift cam. So let's take a look at the head gasket. If you want to get an even better representation, I can show you the cylinder that we can look into. We've also already ground these down to get a little bit more clearance, but you can see the valve still hitting down there. So there would be some more clearancing that we would have to do to make that work. We've already cut a lot out. In fact, we're almost down to the intersection of the piston and the first ring land. And we're pretty far over, I'll show you also on the head gasket. So that's the exhaust valve. Here's the intake valve. You can see we ported this right here. So the intake valve will at least open more than 400 thousandths. It's hitting a little bit better on the intake, you can see. But it's definitely hitting. Right now, that's 600 lift, and it's still hitting. And it's going to hit a lot, you can see. So we can't even run a 600 lift cam yet. And we're already well into where the gasket area is and almost down to the ring land. So this is really gonna be problematic to try to run this big valve rec port head on this small bore motor. I should give you a pretty good idea what's going on. Lots of valve overhang there. So I'll take this off and I'll show you where we've trimmed out to where he is on the gasket. So with our head gasket in place, you can see 
we've already machined, and that's in air quotes, <laughs> basically over to where the gasket would be. There's a little bit of wiggle room in the gasket, but not too much. And this is also a 4100 bore gasket. So it's designed for a big bore LS, not for a 3780. And we're already over to that edge. Not quite as bad on the intake side, because actually this exhaust valve was moved over. So not as bad on the intake side, but still we're down pretty far. I just don't think it's gonna work. Okay guys, as much as I wanted to put the big bore, big valve, big port LS rec port heads on our small bore motor, I just don't think it's going to happen. And there are a number of reasons why even if it could happen, I don't think that it's a good idea, but let's go over first. Let's say we could make it fit. Let somebody, let's say a machinist grabbed this thing and was real precise about it and made the cuts and did everything that he could and didn't overlay the head gasket and didn't go down into the ring land, which I think are probably going to be necessary. But let's say he could make it fit or she could make it fit and it actually works. You can put that big valve head on there and everything clears. You can run a 600 plus lift cam and everything works out. Here's why that's probably going to be a bad idea if we could make it fit. First of all, that is a big chamber head. It is a 70cc chamber head, which is going to be way bigger than the 60cc chamber on a typical 706 or 862. So right away, you're going to lose a full point of compression. Let's face it, a 4.8 or a 5.3 doesn't have an overabundance of torque. Why would you want to give up some of that torque by giving away compression? Here's more of a problem. On any rec port head, when we compare it to a cathedral port head, like a 706 or an 862, even a 799 or a 243, heck, even a 317 head, the rec port head makes less power down low. That's right, it has big valves, it has the coefficient of discharge, even though it has lots of airflow, is not as great. It has a really big port, it has a big chamber, as we mentioned, all of those things conspire to make it produce less low speed power than your typical cathedral port head. So that's number stripe two. The other problem, as we saw, we're gonna have to port this thing out or machine this thing out to fit the valves. In order to do that, we have to install a really big bore gasket, like a 4100 at least. What is that going to do to compression? That's right. If you compare that to a typical head gasket that we use to run on a 48 or a 53, the big bore gasket is also going to lose even more static compression, which means even less power. Now we compound that with the fact that, hey, on one of these small bore motors, the 48 or a 53, can it even take advantage of 315 CFM, which a typical rec port has to offer. Heck, even a cammed LS3 isn't utilizing all that airflow. So where are we gonna get a 4.8 or a 5.3 that actually can take advantage of all that airflow? Yes, I know, I want to run them really bad. I know everybody out there also does, but I don't think it's gonna fit, and I also don't think it's a good idea. Armature Holder, please make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. I'll keep trying. I just don't think it's going to work.